What is your responsibility as an officer working for Visa? Ultimately, the responsibility is to protect the public at the, at the end of the day. We have to be aware of, of the risks around, around these sort of people. We go out and visit um, sex offenders re regularly to ensure they're complying with certain orders that they have in place. We've taken a digital dog as we, we call them. These are dogs that are able to sniff out the smallest little things because they can smell like the, the metal in it. So like a SIM card, a little memory stick. Reviewing that memory stick was um, quite traumatic and the things that I saw on there was something that I wouldn't want to, to relive. Straight away the, the support was, was just there from Kent Police and I, I couldn't fault it at all. It is the, the best job like I've ever had and I can't imagine myself doing anything else. You have more happy times than what, what you do bad times and the teams that you, you're you in, the friendships that you build and you're actually doing something to help as well and support people within, within the community. Welcome to More Than The Badge, a Ken Police podcast. My name is PC Melissa Marsh and I will be your host today. Today's episode is with PC Leona Volsler Leona has worked for Kim Police for five years and is currently working for a department called Visor. Welcome to the podcast, Leona. Thank you. What inspired you to become a police officer? Well, I was originally working in retail and I'd done that because I dropped out of my A-levels basically. So I went to college, I'd done the first year of A-levels and I was like, this is not for me, I need to get, get into work. And then... I thought, why not join the police? There was um, a job advert come up for the Victim Justice Unit, which is where you send uh, case files off to Crown Courts mm -hmm. and you have to review them to make sure police officers have put all the right um, evidence in there, for example. So just applied, why not? Got the job, fortunately, otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here today. And from there, I took a massive interest in the case files I was receiving for you have indecent images, you're inciting a child in sexual communications, took a massive interest in that. So I put my name out there in the visor department, which is the violent and sexual offenders department. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough to get an attachment there because as a civilian, you can still do attachments as well and you can really experience what other departments are like. Um, went there, loved it. And I and a coordinator role actually come up, which I applied for. And that was basically overseeing all the sex offenders that were in the North Division. And you just update addresses, update phone numbers, and just ensure that everything's updated on our police system and liaise with other agencies. So from that, I was seeing other officers who are actually on the ground, actually going out visiting people. And I thought that is something I want to do. Yeah. Grazing risks, um, being able to arrest them, taking them into custody, remanding people, which is where they go to court, like basically the next day for like serious offences and hopefully then, then to prison. And I was just seeing all of that and I thought, wow, I need this job. Like, so then I thought, I just want to do everything. And Actually, they had civilian roles within the visor department as an investigator. So mm -hmm. I applied for one of them, was successful, obviously with the background as the coordinator role. Done that. And then I was thinking, right, I need to arrest now. Like I'm just standing there while everyone else is getting involved. And I'm just there like doing the file, doing the paperwork. So I'm like, I need to apply to become a police officer. And here I am and I'm loving every minute. Absolutely, absolutely love it. You get a bit of the sunshine and a bit of the paperwork. It's a, it's a good balance. Absolutely. <laughs> So you've mentioned your department visor. Mm. What is it that you guys do? So we manage registered sex offenders within the community. There are also violent offenders that are managed, but that's by a separate part of our department. So my main role is sex offenders. We have um, various teams over North, East and West Division that is made up of about 12 officers. Within that, we have our own own uh, workload to manage mm -hmm. and we go out and visit um, sex offenders re regularly to ensure they're complying with certain orders that they have in place so they have different orders such as the sexual harm prevention order sexual risk order and they also have their notification requirements and involved in that is letting us know about internet enabled devices about bank cards anything really i mean everything they do we need to know about to ensure that they're being managed within the community so now that you've got the best of both worlds, doing paperwork and then still being out in the sunshine or possible moonlight, um, how did you get into the role? What route did you take? So I took, it's called 
the PCDA route, which is essentially, you get a degree from this. So I was, I was like, great, I need this. <laughs> um, and do you know what? I was a bit apprehensive about doing it. I was thinking, I've been out of education now for about 10 years. How am I gonna write an essay? How am I gonna do this? You have to do like posters, presentations. I was like, have I made the right decision? But I can just assure if you wanna take that route, it's just, you're so supportive. You feel like you're actually achieving something as well. And yes, it is a lot of hard work but you're supported by the job. You get days where you're able to actually do your work. Um, they're called protected learning days. You're also given days where you watch um, certain videos and you do certain like little tests and that to really get you into back into the college mode once you've been out on section. So I'm in my second year now of doing the degree and yeah, it's great. And I'd recommend anyone to, to take that route really because the support is, is excellent. What is your responsibility as an officer working for Visor? Ultimately, the responsibility is to protect the public at the, at the end of the day. And we're actively in sex offenders' lives. Ultimately, we're always monitoring what they're doing. As I mentioned, you know, certain intelligence that comes, comes through to us, briefings that are sent out to officers. Basically, we know their every move and we are monitoring them, as I said, for the majority, depending on their sentencing, for the rest of their lives. They've always got us, us there, us going out visiting them, us checking their devices, checking absolutely everything to ensure that the community is safe. So what you do is you've caught them and then further on, you're preventing them from making any further offences once you've caught them. So they're constantly being supervised within the community. Yes, that, that's correct. Const, constant supervision. And we can do many, many intelligence checks to ensure that we know their every move, really. Mm -hmm. And we can go out and give disclosures to people, which is if they're concerned about um, someone that's in their family or somebody like that, we actually can go out and give disclosures to them if they do have have children that they are concerned about. How do you manage your work and home life balance within this job? Okay, I mean, yeah, work home life balance, you get, as I said to you, like I get my time to have to do my, my uni work, I get the time to actually do, do my job, and then I get my days off. I work seven till three, Monday to Friday, the occasional weekend. But of course, if we do end up arresting somebody, that's when you're looking at doing 20 plus hour shifts in order to get someone in front of the courts. Um, we call it like a remand, basically. Mm -hmm. And that's when people have breached certain conditions that are in place and they're all up. Of course, you're gonna get challenges where you, you do think about work, but again, you, you've just, you learn to, to not basically and to really separate that work home life mm -hmm. it is difficult but you do learn you do learn to, learn to do that yeah I think the other thing is it's like with a Monday to a Friday job mm. you, you've got two days off I think even though you're dealing with the hard shift and a long shift there's nothing more rewarding than realizing you've got four days off <laughs> after doing a six day shift mm. and, and Kent please give, give you a lot of annual leave as well I mean and you can work up if you do a bit of overtime you can take that as time if you want to and they're reasonably uh, flexible when you can take your annual leave and that. Can you share a moment with us just um, a moment in your career where you've had a case that you've worked on that's really stayed with you this could be a proud moment or a moment that you've found challenging. So I visited one of my loan nominals upon entering their address I was able to see a phone charger over in the corner mm -hmm. I've kind of questioned this, like, why have you got this? Because he, he was subject to an order where he wasn't allowed internet enabled devices without us installing certain monitoring software on it and letting us know about it. Obviously discovered this device in, in his property and um, a lot of images were, were found on that and he was convicted and he's still currently in prison. So it was a, a great, great result and probably one of the highlights of my career. Well, just out of interest, like, would you have a challenging moment as well? Yeah, so my, my challenging moment, I would say, was another one, offend, one, another one of our offenders managed as high risk within the community, gone out to, to do a visit with them. Um, and we've had certain intelligence to say that there was something not quite right, maybe a, another device there. Once again, he was subject to orders where he had to tell us about devices. Mm -hmm. We've taken a digital dog as we, we call them. So these are dogs that are able to sniff out the smallest little things because they can smell like the, the metal in it. So 
like a SIM card, a little memory stick, like anything. It's absolutely amazing to watch this dog going around somebody's address. So we've, we've all gone out, um, had the dog searching and this dog got um, besotted on this like recliner chair. And we was all thinking, oh, maybe it can smell the mechanisms of the chair or whatever. So we've, we've turned the chair up and next thing there's a, a memory card in it. So obviously you're kind of expecting stuff to be on there due to it being hidden. And this is where the challenging point comes in. Because even though it was a highlight, bringing this offender like into custody, etc. And getting the, the justice there. Reviewing that memory stick was um, quite traumatic. And the things that I saw on there was something that I wouldn't want to, to relive. Yeah. Um, however, you know, you learn how to manage that. Kent Police have an amazing welfare in place in, in order to support you through that and the importance of working as a team as well and you're able to debrief with one another of the trauma that, that you've, you've been through yeah and I feel like within the police you're going to expect to go through that trauma in many different things it might be from indecent images or seeing a, a dead body for example but again you you have there's amazing welfare in place and your team's just great you've just spoken about the digital detection dogs mm. it's quite interesting that there's only two currently in Kim yes. is that correct yes two two currently one of them's um a little cocker spaniel and then the other one is a, a Labrador, but normally we have the uh, Cocker Spaniel that, that comes out and supports us, so. Absolutely love it. I just can't resist, I have to always touch the club. <laughs> <laughs> They're very cute. Um, so what support and camaraderie, what, what's that like it, amongst your colleagues at the moment? So even from when I was on response, it's just the, the teamwork that you have is just net, next to none. Like, you go to a difficult job, you've always got someone there with you to like debrief with, who supports you. And even in this this current, like my current role in Visor, we go out in pairs all the time. Where you've always got someone with you in dealing with, like even when you image grade everything, you've always got someone with you to like debrief with. Yeah. And as I was saying, even on response, there's just no other bonds like it. Like I, I haven't been on response for a little while now and I still have, you know, chats with, with my colleagues who, who I worked with and we're still meeting up and everything, which is, it's just bonds that you can't explain really in the place. I'm glad to hear it's quite similar in your department because I mean mm. I'm a few months into working with the response to, um, side of the team and my goodness I'd go to a call where I'm feeling really weary and all of a sudden you've got three or four other officers that turn up or you go to a sudden death scene and you come back into the office and everyone's just checking with you are you okay it's so nice to mm. see that that's still there in another department oh, as yeah. well it's not just the main front line yeah absolutely as I said you just can't can't explain it as, as you know it's just amazing <laughs> so how do you manage the emotional impact of the role so for me in my current role putting someone back into prison gives you that bit of comfort to think I've got a bad person that's doing horrendous crimes off the street they're back in and it's it's worth going through through the um what well, what you have to do basically your evidence gathering etc and it, make, it makes it all worth it knowing that they're back in prison um with regards to the job I spoke about before when the when we reviewed their horrendous images straight away the, the support was was just there from Kent Police and I, I couldn't fault it at all. We had um, occupational health give me a ring, they spoke through what I had seen, whether I should be referred for counselling and then from there you then get referred for in-person in -person counselling if they feel that, that you need that. But they, they were there within an hour of me reviewing those, those images. My, my sergeant was incredibly supportive as well. She actually helped me with the occupational health phone call because, as you can imagine, things that you see in the police are quite horrendous and can be quite horrific. Of course. And then also on response, you see absolutely horrendous things from dead bodies, fatal road traffic collisions, giving CPR to someone. Like, you just don't realise how that can have an impact on on you and it's important to realize if you're going for this job you need to you need to be able to mentally deal with that but in in the response team etc you have something called a trim practitioner mm -hmm. which is a um, basically someone that that's trained to manage the harm that you've you've been through it's a it's a management plan mm -hmm. And they assess you once you come back off, off a job that's been quite horrendous. You, you sit down with them and other people that have also been in that, that job 
and you talk through what's happened, you have a, a big de debrief about it basically. And then from there, they can refer you to occupational help if, if they feel that you need to, to go through that. And then again, on to independent counselling, if, if occupational health feel, feel that you need that. But also it's important to realise that the team around you are going through the same thing as you and they are ultimately there to support you. Yeah, so you've, you've mentioned TRIM. TRIM is our trauma risk incident management team. Yes. Um, and they would do the assessment if you go to something rather traumatic. Yes. I think the good thing is also that you're speaking to your colleagues... Um, but sometimes things can change. You'd think that you're okay half an hour after a job and you'll just have a conversation with them. But sometimes, maybe further down the line, two weeks later or a month later, you might still be feeling quite low and you don't realise it's from a job that you've been to. So we've got those referral teams such as Trim and the occupational health team that deal with those incidents yes absolutely and we, we've actually had that in our department when you can review images but you don't realize the effect that has on you until something triggers you for example if you see a child in the street that that can be a, a trigger straight away and they're always open occupational health give them a ring say look i've had this job i feel like it's really affected me can i please have some help and they, they help help you out 100 percent so I think what we can say for our listeners is even though you go through these incidents as a police officer, don't be afraid to talk. Everyone's here to listen and support um, and there's a service there for you should you need it. Absolutely. Yeah. And also your, your training as well that, that you have at the college. Yeah. They're, you know, you're, you're taught to recognise your, your feelings and your mental health about how you feel about certain things and you're, you're taught to acknowledge the way you're feeling if you're not feeling right you know, you need to, you need to seek that help. Yeah. And the other training, for example, you know, coming across serious incidents, it just, it just kicks in. You just, you don't realise how much you learn at, at the college. And as soon as you're there in that situation, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. I know, I know exactly what you mean. Cause I mean, my first ever cardiac arrest, I was like, oh, am I going to be capable of doing this? I've sat there with my gloves on waiting for my turn to do chest compressions. And I was like, I think I think I've got it. I've got it under control. And then the minute you jump in, it's it's there. Yeah. So it's very valuable training that we get from the service as well. Definitely. Yeah. So what are the most common misconceptions that you face? The most common misconceptions is that the police are just there to arrest people, which is far from the case. Like the amount of victims we deal with, we're supporting them through horrendous crimes that have happened to them. And ultimately we are here to, to support people and we can put you in that right direction of how to seek support. We're not just here to make your life difficult. Yeah. Yeah, no, I fully agree with you. I've been to a call recently where it was just someone that needed some extra support. And I don't think they realized that we had those tools to hand to actually provide that assistance. And it's such a relief when they see that we are able to assist beyond just making an arrest for an offender. So that was quite refreshing. Yeah. Um, what's been the scariest moment or a moment that you've realized uh, the risks that you have in the job at the risk of what you do? Oh, there's, there's always risks within the job, isn't there? I mean, from res response, if you, you was worried, if you've couldn't find a suspect if you've turned up to a domestic and the suspect had fled the scene and even in my role at the moment you know you you often think what happens if one of my nominals that I've graded as low is goes on to commit an offence a further, further offence it's always that that panic but you need to have trust in yourself that you've reviewed that situation adequately and you're able to really write up the risk assessments and to say, well, look, there was nothing there to suggest that they would go on to, to re-offend. And unfortunately, these things do happen, but we put everything in place in order to, to prevent this. What direction do you have for your career now? Where would you like to take yourself further forward in the future? So I would love to progress. At the moment, I want to get my degree out the way and proper settle down with advisor again in, in that department. But my ultimate goal is to progress through the ranks to become an inspector and above really i mean that's that's what i'd love love to do would that be to stay in visor or would you consider it a different department oh no 100 percent. i would consider it a different department i feel like within policing you sometimes you, you want that change to really like experience different different departments and i feel if you do want to progress up through the ranks as well you need to you need to know like the ground job first before you start going up and trying to lead a department that you've never worked a day in your life in absolutely <laughs> yeah so that, that's what I've, i'd like to do perfect so which would be the next department for you 
Good question. <laughs> there are so many, there are so many jobs in Kent Place that you that you can do and the, the opportunity is just, is amazing. And as I've said about attachments and stuff that, that you can do, you can stay there for a month if you, if you want to in a, in a department to really see what it's like. I mean, for me, I wouldn't mind, I suppose, the child protection team. Again, there's just, just so much. Yeah, absolutely. I think... Um... There's a few that have popped up on the open days when you attend the Kent Police open days and you never realise how many different departments there actually are so you kind of just have to dip your toe into the water and find Absolutely. out which department's for you. Yes. So we're now going into our off-the-cuff segment which is something a little bit different. Um, first thing I'm going to ask you is what is your go-to shift snack? has to be chicken nuggets especially on a night shift as well like you crave them like something else at like three o'clock in the morning <laughs> yeah my favorite I, I agree with you um so if you could be a superhero the question you always used to have as a kid what would your superpower be I would love to remove all the bad offenses in the world I mean you know your your people that your shoplifters stuff like that and your your murderers your things just just to have none of that I know I'd be out of a job but <laughs> I mean what a world it would be right like not to have none of these crimes going on everyone lives happily but again that's an ideal world that's never gonna happen isn't it <laughs> no of course um but luckily we've got people like us in the force there to prevent her and there to protect our vulnerable people Absolutely. um if you could choose any celebrity to join you on a shift who would it be? David Attenborough, all day long. His knowledge, it just fascinates me, like what he knows, wildlife, anything. And I can't imagine a night shift dragging if you had him in the car with you, you know, just talking about everything really, what's going on in the world. He's just such a, a public figure that I think everyone loves. So I would love to have David Attenborough with me on yeah, a shift. Yeah, definitely calm very interesting person yeah and probably re really reassuring as well like if you're turning up to a job you're a bit unsure about a bit worried about i can imagine him like just reassuring you like it's gonna be okay yeah a little bit of a walking encyclopedia yes absolutely <laughs> what would be the one thing you wish the public knew about your role as a police officer how hard we work and the challenges we face day to day is just ridiculous. And before I joined the police, you had no idea. I had absolutely no idea about the sort of things that we would be seeing, the sort of things we'd be dealing with. And we, we work hard, you know, like gathering statements, gathering all the evidence and all the paperwork that comes with that is just ridiculous. And obviously we, we are always offering that that best service and we try and do our, do our best with whatever we do. But it's, uh, yeah, it can, can get challenging at times. Yeah, I think also just letting people know that, you know, at the end of the day, even under this uniform where you've got the authority and the pride and respect for your community and willing to be giving back, it's that remembering that you're still human, you're still learning, and it's an ever-changing role where you'll still be learning. Mm. And, and we all make mistakes as well, isn't it? I mean, we, we always try and rectify whatever mistakes we've made, but as you said, we are we are human, we do have a heart, like... We, we do understand certain things like, even yeah. though we're not probably living in that situation that, that you're going through we do understand and we see it day to day in our role yeah absolutely so what advice would you give to someone thinking about joining the career as a police officer do it it is the the best job like I've ever had and I can't imagine myself doing anything else I mean you have your challenges day to day but you the, you have more happy times than what, what you do bad times and the teams that you you're in the friendships that you build and you're actually doing something to help as well and support people within within the community yeah. it's, just, it's just amazing just join up do it I just wanted to say um, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today and it's been a pleasure having you Thank you. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode, follow us on Instagram, X, Facebook, and LinkedIn, where we'll be posting previews of our upcoming episodes. Don't forget that you can watch this episode by subscribing to our YouTube channel and find out more about the variety of career opportunities by searching Kim Police Careers. See you soon. Mm -hmm.